Welcome to the evening review. Joining us in studio tonight is Nudo SG, Josika Wandenge. Before we go into that interview, please have a look at the front page. Welcome back to the Evening Review, Honorable. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, last time we had you in studio, my editor Toys had you with uh, the late uh, Kadenambo, Kadenambo. Um, you know, how, how best would you remember him? And, you know, what are the lessons that you, that you have learned from him? Well, um, really, when I received the news that um, uh, KK is no more, I had to pinch myself to ask myself whether this is really true. Uh, because I remember we sat at the same table some time back on the first uh, um, uh, episode of the agenda, mm. uh, where we were talking about various issues in the country. Uh, Karenambo, for me, was a character out of this world. Uh, because he had no fear in him. He will tell you what he thinks about you, irrespective of whether you like it or not. He was true to his convictions and principles till his death. Mm. And ironically, we heard that he had um, COVID, but the way he fought with this COVID, it's, it's, it's characteristic of Kalinambo. Other people will get sick today, tomorrow they are gone. He fought with this disease until he was cleared, and unfortunately other complications came in. So that is his character. Mm -hmm. So uh, perhaps what a person and any young person can take from Kalenambo is that at times we have to put our principles above our stomach. We have to defend the defenseless, irrespective of the consequences to our own being, uh, believing in the bigger picture, uh, Martin Luther King reminds us that if you are not prepared to, buy, to die for anything, then it's no, you are not worth living. Uh, and that is the character of Kalenambo. And really, Namibia has lost a vibrant, uh, a volcanic person that will say whatever he thinks at whatever platform, at whatever time, but in the defense of the, break, of the greater Namibian society. So it's a loss to Namibia, really. Um, recently, we've seen um, from the side of the opposition that there's much resistance to the appointment of Anti-Corruption Commission um, Director General Paulus Noah. Now, the, the, do you think that the opposition is approaching it in the right way because the act in itself gives the president the mandate to appoint uh, any suitable candidate for the Director General and Deputy Director General as he sees fit. So, do you think that the uh, uh, that opposition parties in general are going about it in the correct way? Well, I think we must put it categorically very clear that the opposition parties that went to court had no issues with the president powers vested in him by the Constitution to appoint the Director General of mm. the ACC. We simply don't have any quarrels with that. We know it's a constitutional obligation, it's a constitutional right that is given to the, 
president of the country to do so. So there we have no squalms. Our point of departure was not uh, on the power of the president to appoint, but it was about the procedures followed by the National Assembly to approve the nomination. Mm -hmm. We are saying the president made a proclamation that parliament should sit on a certain date. While the parliament was in session, the speaker announced that uh, they will extend the sitting for another day. Mm. This is where we are particularly having a problem because once the president do make that proclamation, he can only amend it before that proclamation starts. He cannot amend it while the proclamation is in effect. And this is where we are saying that the procedures followed was totally wrong. Therefore, well, that's why we went to the highest court in the land to try to, for them to help us interpret whether the National Assembly, and in particular the Speaker, was not really, did, uh, what is it, uh, used in, in the legal terms, the ultra-virus concept of that he went beyond what he is supposed to be doing and that he did not have that power to actually go ahead and make amendments to the proclamation. And even the day when the <coughs> National Assembly uh, uh, set and, and, and approved this nomination, the president issued a second proclamation. When was this proclamation sent to the opposition parties or members of parliament? Late at night at 10 o'clock that tomorrow we are sitting. So our focus and our challenge is more about the procedures followed by the speaker, by the National Assembly, in order to get um, uh, uh, NOAA appointments approved. Mm. And we have no quarrel or quarrel with the head of state or the president, whether he has powers or not. That is very clear. He has that power. But the procedures followed is the one that we are challenging in the highest court of the country. But then to take it a step back, um, does this also not perhaps, will it also not perhaps come, come that uh, uh, given that uh, this, this, this appointment can go through and that, um, 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 you know, as, 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 as long as the parliamentary processes are followed, are followed too. Um, would you say you are satisfied with the, with, the, with the conduct then or with the work that the ACC has done in, in, in rooting out corruption? The ACC, to our understanding and from a, a, a person, a layman observing from outside, have really been ineffective. Uh, Noah is the director general of the ACC. At the same time, he was quoted on Swapo platform saying that we have everything under control. Whatever that's supposed to mean, I don't know. Uh, the, the, the must come a time in this country when we have to distinguish between state organs and state institution and personalities. People that are leading critical institutions of state should be seen to be apolitical. They should not participate openly on party, political party, WhatsApp group, on party platforms. And then tomorrow, uh, when you question their integrity, you are told, no, uh, Swapo members like any other Namibian has the right to be employed anyway. It's of course. You cannot discriminate against WAPO members not to be employed anyway because primarily they are just WAPO members. But all what we are saying that leaders or people that are leading institution, critical institution of state should be seen to be apolitical. And to Noah, honestly, uh, even late this year, somewhere, while the investigation is going about the fish rod and the links of the WAPO party to the fish rod, he came out and said there is no evidence to pursue this case, Swapo is clean. Mm. While his own people, fellow investigators in the ACC are saying, but why can he, should he make such a statement while we are still continuing? So we are of the opinion that the ACC both have shielded Swapo and Swapo functionary, heavyweights within, within the Swapo party. Uh, he have shielded them for a long time, not to be uh, um, brought to book. And that is why we also have a problem with him continuing as a director general of the ACCC. 
Um, moving on now uh, to matters concerning the city of Ventuk. We saw that there was a there was a delay in the coalition partners signing the coalition agreement. There were the teething problems. The coalition agreement is now signed, and there were comments that were made in the press. Um, you know, what is the way forward now, and how are you going to ensure as coalition partners that internally there is cohesion, but that you are also able to address one of the most critical issues, which is obviously the land issue? Well, for starters, when you talk about the Vendu Coalition um, Agreement, mm. there are two facets of two faces to that story, and that is on one hand, yes, <clears throat> there was the inability by the opposition leaders themselves to come together on the same table and sign the agreement. There was some lecture uh, problem there. But also at the same time, the Swapo party tried to maximize that disagreement within the forces, the progressive forces at the city of Endu. Because mind you, and we cannot be told otherwise, mm. what happened with the land grabbing and whatnot, surely it was very clear that the Swapo party was behind this. But the question is, if the Swapo party has been ruling this country or that city, in particular the city of Enduk, for the past 30 years, mm. and they are the architect, actually, of informal settlement in the city of Enduk, because they allow these people to come and settle in informal settlement in return for votes at the end of the day so that they can win the city of Enduk. They could not address the issue of land for the past 30 years. Mm. I'm not making an excuse. Progressive forces cannot actually also be uh, 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 expected to address the burning land issue in only eight months since we took over the city of Enduk, while those that have been there since independence could not do so. But back to your question is that, yes, there was some disagreement within the coalition partner, but we said, listen, uh, the four of us, the, the leaders of these various political parties that are in our coalition, we say, what is the bigger picture? The bigger picture is that the opposition forces should be seen and be trusted that they can lead. So let's put aside our differences, our ecos and ecotism and whatever we have, mm -hmm. let them put, put them aside and come together on the table and, and look at the bigger picture because the people of the city or the resident of the city of Endu are demanding services, service provisions. So that's what we did. And we came together and we signed the coalition agreement. Mm. Yes. Now, on the other end, uh, we had uh, the Inspector General of the Police, uh, Mr. Ndeitunga, make, uh, say, one, that he would um, take over the, 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 the council of the city of Ventu. On the other end, there were suggestions or there were noises that, um, the, 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 that uh, what is it, an administrator would be appointed by the urban and rural development minister for the council. What do you make of these things if they can't, if, as a, as a, you know, now that you are in this coalition agreement and leading the city? Well, for starters, I think uh, the <laughs> inspector general of the Namibian police must be called to order. Uh, you know, General De Tunga has a habit of making some silly, unfounded statements at places and times when you don't expect it from a head of a police force in this country. Now, although he came back and tried to clarify what he said, it was really uncalled for. And the line minister, uh, Kapofi, should have called the general to order to say, don't get involved in political affairs. The mandate of the Namibian police is to maintain law and order. The statement that he made that we will run that city of Venduk over, we know that General De Tunga is a Swapo functionary, in and out. We know that. And we don't want to be reminded of that fact, but we know he is. But that statement was really uncalled for. It was shalties of him to make such a statement in the first instance, because it is not appreciated or, or, or anticipated from a man in his position to make such a statement. That statement then fueled our belief that the Swapo party was busy, actually, underground, to try to evoke Section 92 of the local authority election through the line minister to say, you see, uh, they cannot run the city of Enduk, so 
we will place the city of Enduk with, within the ambit of an administrator to run the affairs of the city of Enduk. Believe me, Suapo is paining to this day that they have lost control of so many municipalities in this country, in particular the capital city of, of Vendu. So they will do anything within their power to make sure that they regain um, the, the, the power in that city. But I must say, no, they must wait <laughs> until the next election. Unfortunately, the progressive forces are in charge of the city of Vendu. And we cannot only be judged now through eight months. We must be allowed to fail or to prosper, to progress, to provide, or not to provide, but only after five years, when the electorate should go back to the polls and say, yes, we will give you another mandate, or no, you have messed up, we are going to vote you out. Not now. Uh, there are these, um, you know, we get commentary when we engage um, analysts, and what, come, what, what, what is often said is, yeah, look at the structure of IP, or look at the, uh, the, the ideology of IPC and PDM, right wing aligned, so to say, then you come back to AR and, 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 and perhaps also Noodle, where they would say, okay, well, more left-leaning and ideologically these parties cannot come together and therefore um, this coalition is bound to fail. What do you say about that? Well, I think it's inevitable that we will come from different ideologies different outlook, uh, that's, that, that's the truth. However, if you read these parties' manifestos, mm. surely you will find common ground, certain aspect that we speak the same language. We might frame it differently. Uh, Dr. Itula might come with his articles and the quotations and what have you, uh, learn as he is, Venani might come with his uh, eloquency and whatnot, but there are certain areas within these manifestos <coughs> where you will find similarities. Mm. So we are not really concentrating on what divides us. We are concentrating on what unites us. And that is where we will take those areas where we agree and put it uh, together. And then if there are areas where we don't agree, we will have to sit and see how we can manage. Because Ogone, at the end of the day, political parties and formations will come and go. But this country will still remain. Mm. Isn't it? Yes, yes, of if, course. If, if you go back to the Jose Akutakos, the Madume de Mofayos, the uh, Hedrick Vedbues, whoever, at their time, they had a different Namibia from what we have today. And we, we have a different Namibia from our future generations that will come. So Namibia will still remain. So uh, I believe that when we talk and discuss in the coalitions uh, or the progressive forces, we are putting the country and the city interests first before our own interests. And that's why we are really working very hard to make sure that we come together on those areas where we agree. And where we don't agree, we have to find uh, an amicable solution in the middle uh, and move forward. Um, we've seen the developments in, in Zambia and if one looks at the Zambian case, particularly from 1991, you've always seen this um, change of leadership. Um, what do you think is, what do you think opposition parties and perhaps also party, your own party could learn from the Zambian experience as far as, as, as our internal politics is, is concerned? Again, it's, it's, it's the bigger picture. Because, mind you, how many parties do we have in this country as opposition? Mm. For a population this size of Namibia, should we really have so many diverse political parties? I don't believe so. I believe that if we had a ruling party and an opposition or a conglomeration of opposition parties together, that are forming an alliance, we will have a different Namibia from what we have today. Because mind you, for the past 30 years, we actually had a one-party de facto state in this country. While our constitution is talking about a multi-party democracy, we did not have a multi-party democracy in this country. At all levels of government, the Swapo party was dominating from central, executive, and local government level. So that is a one-party de facto. But the 
saddest thing is that when you come to an election, and for instance, the regional elections, for instance, you will see five political parties, opposition participating against the Swapo Party candidate. But if you, after the election, if you calculate the votes of all these five political parties added together, they are more than a Swapo candidate that have won that constituency. So I think really it is time that we go back to the basics as, as opposition leaders in this country to ask ourselves, what is it that we want? Is it only as good as being called a president of a party, Kawadenge is an SG, or a president of the party and that is uh, stroking my ego nicely, or is there a bigger picture? And that is what the Zambian people did. They disregarded their own interests. They disregarded their own comfort and said, let's join together all these other opposition parties in this alliance. And today, they have won. And that is what we have to learn from, from that experience as Namibian opposition parties. Because the more we are fragmented, the more we are allowing the Swapo party to continue messing up this country as they have been messing up terribly over the past 30 years. Namibia is classified as a middle income country. We have all the resources in this country, but the poverty lines in this country is amazing. We should not have this poverty. Why? Because we have given the Swapo Party too much money over these years. We have made them into their power entrenched at all sectors of our society. And then at the end of the day, we are crying foul outside here and saying the Swapo Party is messing up the country. No, the Swapo Party is messing up, aided by our own ignorance and our own selfishness at the end of the day for not making time to say, guys, let's come together. Mm. But the problem with the opposition in this country is that everybody wants to be a leader. Before you even discuss the core issues, the manifestos, the ideologies, the first question is always, who's going to be the leader? And that's where it ends, because everybody wants to be at the forefront. So only if we move back and say, listen, the country is bigger than all of us. Let's come together. Let's form a united front come 2024 election. I'm telling you what has happened in Zambia. We can repeat it in this country because people are fed up. They are really fed up with the status quo in this country. Graduates, where are they, my good friend? They are graduating on a every year. They are serious. They're at home. There is no job opportunities for the young people of this country. Well, well, you have uh, the elder generation being recycled over and over again. Namibia is the only country in the world where you have a minister of youth and sport at 76 years old. Honestly, my goodness, seriously, what energy does that person have to run a ministry of youth affairs? And do you want to tell me that in this Namibia you don't have young people that can actually take that ministry, energetic as they are, and contribute meaningfully to the youth agenda in this country. Unfortunately, and this is due to our own making. So we have to copy and paste from the Zambian situation and then come home and work. And let us not wait until 2023 or 2024. That's when we want to come together. No, 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 no. We have to start now to say, our colleagues, let us come together as opposition. Let's talk. Positions will come and go, my good friend. Wealth will come and go. Even if you are how rich, that money, you will still leave it on this earth. And someone you did not like while you were alive, he will come and take that money and start eating. So let us think about the bigger picture. And that is what the Zambian people really did. And I think we have the capacity to repeat it here in Namibia. Thank you so much for making the time to be here with us. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Good night. Sure.
speeches that you want to tell the, our nation, like from your firm's point of view, something you want to say celebrating this day? Um, yes, um, I just want to give you um, a short message uh, regarding the Humanitarian Day. Well, this year's Humanitarian Day highlights the human costs arising from the climate uh, crisis. Namibia is on the front line of this worldwide threat to humanity and having already started to experience severe droughts and flooding uh, within the last um, years, um, many people have been left without access to enough food as, um, yeah, just to mention one consequence of this um, climate uh, crisis and probably painting a worrying picture uh, for the decades to come. Nevertheless, uh, the humanitarian day shall also serve as an occasion to remember the power that people have in helping um, others when they come uh, together. Whilst it might be difficult there, it is still a hope if um, all Namibian works towards adapting for the future uh, crisis. Well, the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, through its ongoing efforts and um, networks, um, together with its partners and stakeholders, continues worldwide to promote human rights, justice, solidarity, good governance, peace, equality and sustainability. So um, this is our contribution as Konrad Anna Foundation to this specific day. But as I said, we should always uh, remember this day, not only on this specific day, but throughout the year, while the challenging uh, to the society is, uh, is huge, especially now with the COVID pandemic and the uh, impact on, on poverty and, and uh, reduce of, of um, economic power. So uh, there are a lot of challenge to face regarding also the climate uh, changes that happens and that affecting the rural areas mainly. So uh, this will be our contribution within our activities. Uh, yeah, and also to continue networking together in order to, yeah, to shape a better Namibia.